I have five boxes here, right? Remember the structure? The objective is A. On one branch, the need is B. The other branch need is C. And then I have D and B prime, right, for the wants. So from what we have here, which one do you think is the objective? How profitable is the B system? Sorry? How profitable is the B system? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, no matter what we do, there's no distribution systems out there that's trying to lose money, generally speaking. Uh, okay, what's B? So the need of the upper branch, let's say. Control calls. Okay. Good. Agree? Yep. Okay. What's C, the other side? Protect sales. Protect sales, right. All right. And in order to achieve, in order to control cost, what must we do? Fold less inventory. Fold less inventory. And so that means in order to protect sales, we must hold okay. lots of inventory. Right. Okay. Now, so that was easy. Right. We, we built the structure. What are the assumptions that go from control cost to hold inventory? There's no, there's probably a whole bunch of assumptions. So just, you know, whatever comes to mind, what makes sense to you? There's too much inventory. It's perfect. Uh, okay. So maybe think about it like this. Remember the kind of structure of the sentence we were talking about, right? Uh, in order to control costs, we must hold less inventory because, and then you can put whatever reason, like what you said, because there's too much inventory in the system behind it and see if that whole sentence flows to you. It's the year test. How about the other side? We could do both sides. So either one, in order to protect sales, we must hold lots of inventory because? Demand variability. Okay, demand is difficult to predict. That's one, sure. So that makes sense. If, if, if demand is going fluctuating, we want to make sure we have enough safety stock there to make sure we don't run out. Okay. Why else? Why else would we want to hold lots of inventory? Quality discounts. Right. That's actually possible. But. <clears throat> what is the lead time? Have to do. Have to reduce the time to market. Yeah. Well, you you said the other. Yeah. See, actually, that's a good. Um, a lot of times we do these, and what people are thinking about are not the assumptions of how we get from A to B. What people are thinking about is they're jumping to solution, right? Uh, of What was it you just said? Reducing the time to market. Right. Yeah. So. All the inventory. Right. But it's. It, it, do you see what I mean? It's not. A, it's not an assumption. Mm -hmm. Why well, you're actually explaining, uh, why it's bad to have a long lead time. Let's or a, a, a lot of inventory. Why it's necessary to have a lot of inventory. I. I mean, we do that all the time too. Okay, so think about uh, if you have a few parts to a certain lead time, you have like transportation cost, uh, time, you have your order lead time, you have your production lead time, right? Generally, it's those three parts. Um, what 
what can change? What, what, are, is there uncertainty within that deep time? Production, when I'm producing something, because I ran out over there, now it generates an emergency order and gets put into the queue. And now the regular schedule production just got pushed back. Right? That happens a lot in manufacturing. I have emergency orders that need to come through. Uh, or, or because the customer is yelling, or because we're stocked out, stuff like that. Um, transportation, obviously, trucks break down, ships break down, uh, all that kind of stuff, right? It may not be a huge part of it, but we hold, we tend to hold more inventory, probably even more than what those uncertainties represent in a lot of cases. So, on the bottom, in order to protect sales, we want to hold lots of inventory uh, because demand is uncertain lead times are long and the lead time may, may, may not always be the same it's not it's not it's also uncertain it's okay yeah and season is part of the uncertainty of demand it's yeah. the same thing because if it is seasonal when one season i might have higher like, it could be like a different. I would at least add it as a like a different factor. I have to yeah. because it, it happens in like mm -hmm. some companies. Most of their yeah. retailers, yeah. most of their sales like Black from the yeah, Black Friday to yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the other branch, the uh, B to B. We solved the C to B plus, I think B prime. So in order to control costs, we should hold less inventory because your housing cost is high. Yeah, so that's one. These really, a lot of times, obsolescence, exactly, right? Um, Cash being tied up. Cash, yeah, cash being tied up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all those things. So the vicious cycle, kind of the, 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 the vicious cycle that we talked about earlier. Um, at least for me, it, it's not difficult a lot of times to build the structure of the uh, cloud. It's really difficult to come up with assumptions because it really is, for me at least, I'm just sharing my own experience, right? Building these, you're taking kind of baby steps. Uh, like something, because there could be something that's very logical in your head. It's so logical that you just skip over it and you don't think about it. Um, so, I think what that's is, like if you're like during the session of the break, where it's written down and they're meeting and they have like two people or three people, we have the different scenarios. Yeah. And we both need like, we both look back for it with both. You know, like the two, yeah. the two way of being operated because it, it could be happened, right? Yeah. I mean, both, there are certainly, that, the evaporating cloud is a good tool, but it's not magic, right? There's definitely going to be situations where either both branches are not valid or both branches have assumptions that are like uh, rock solid and you, there's nothing you can, it doesn't, you can't change it, right? Um, I think eventually it just depends on the level you go down, right? Maybe it comes down to uh, how much one option costs versus the other, and you really got to get down to the details. But uh, certainly it's not always the case that, uh, I don't know, have you yeah, seen Yeah, so I think it is always going to be better than this. I yeah. see this is one of the fundamental things that that uh, you know, CEO feels that any, any system can be dramatically improved from where they are. So, but we find that there are things which are uh, uh, which are which are true, which are which cannot be 
we, we cannot break. But it's definitely still possible to get much of this. Because I would give an example of one of the customers where the lead times are really long. However, there are other things in the lead time which they can control. So definitely you might not get a perfect answer, but you will get a much better answer than you would So I'm not in a situation where we have not got yeah. a better answer. You may not be able to solve the like fundamental conflict that exists in there, but you'll be able to make some changes that at least make the situation a little bit better. Okay, is there another uh, logic on what you're saying? Is uh, what elites say is touch time versus lead time. Mm -hmm. So the gap is so huge <coughs> that. Uh, <laughs> Disrupting the train. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this tool is really powerful because if you keep asking that question in order to, I must, yeah. why, and then you put that assumption, and people who are in the heat of change, they can spurt out five reasons and assumptions like this, mm -hmm. including it being done this way in yeah. mm -hmm. So the other thing is, when we go to specific situations, it actually goes very fast. Because people are already in yeah, the environment, think. you know, you get like this. So they don't have to think, they are also already on fire. Right? Right. 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 So, you know, if I think about my situation and I think about the, you know, the foodies and so, then it is, it is, it is quick. So if we have a like two people in the same company with opposing views and okay, even if you know they have all the same views and there is a better answer, but still you will be able to identify a lot of assumptions. Right. right. And uh, people will point, uh, will have a discussion. When you have a lot of people discussing together, I think you, so you, that's my daughter. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, you uncover those assumptions. So uh, it is a very interesting exercise. Uh, with doing with at least two people. Yeah, and I think it, we don't even necessarily just talk about it in the context of having a conflict cloud. Um, a lot of times when people get stuck or just generally being like a creative process, uh, we talk about bringing out assumptions to make sure that like that's usually how you get like a breakthrough in order to resolve a situation. Okay, uh, here, right, if we look at these two sides, generally speaking, we're saying, hey, look, we can challenge the fact that replenish time is long, right? Going back to what I was saying about why isn't this um, implemented, the solution implemented more frequently or you know with more naturally more intuitively uh, <clears throat> it's it's because of these assumptions replenish replenishment time is is long demand is difficult to predict right and resupply is not reliable this is not always the case but sometimes it is uh, you know this, people look at it and say well the, the, the lead time has always been this long. And in fact, in the last five years, all I see is actually the lead time getting longer and longer and longer. So I can't assume anything else other than that lead time is very long, right? So when you tell me that in order to break out of my cycle, I need to reduce my lead time, replenishment time, I'm automatically like, no, <laughs> this is impossible, right? You're asking for the impossible. Uh, but Really, you, you can go down the level and say, okay, why is your replenishment time long? Why is, you know, break it down into its components. Why is this long? Why is that long? And then you start getting into kind of the cause and effects. Exactly, yeah. Um, and I work with uh, a customer also in Utah. Um, actually, 
a lot of their inventory is on consignment from the suppliers. It's like 90% of their stuff is on consignment. So they, this is not really an issue for them. A lot of inventory that doesn't sell becomes obsolete. Their product really has no shelf life. Yeah, there's no shelf life. Uh, so, but I'm just pointing that out because, you know, in some situations, obviously, right, we think this is what we can challenge. Uh, and sometimes you can challenge this also. <laughs> this is, yeah. that, that makes the situation a little bit different. So for them, uh, they do, you, they do have like in high inventory levels. So if we reduce it, they can get uh, one-time savings in terms of how much they bring the depth of each SKU down, right? But uh, for them, the solution became more about what should we carry in the stores? What is the right product mix for us to carry? Which we'll talk about a little bit like next time, right? But the, the, my, my point is, you know, Look at the situation. If if this can be challenged, then of course you change course, right? Maybe this doesn't apply. You know, so Do you see from your experience, if you went through this extraordinary time, like a certain trend, for example, the party who's saying we have doing that for a long time the same way. Usually the party can be very easily or something like that, or like certain trends you see and this time you can get I didn't get the question. Like for, for if you're listening to the two sides of yeah. the argument, that's like A and C versus, uh, sorry, uh, C and D. Yeah. And C and D and D and D prime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so one one side is discussing that controlling goals would be we need to do for a whole whole inventory, and the other saying mm -hmm. in order to fit sales, we have to hold less, a lot of inventory. Uh, in this type of these sessions, um, do you see patterns? patterns? See patterns like uh, those. Uh, if someone say, "Hey, we have been doing that for a long time," usually, like this is the one that can be very easily like that. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's actually uh, if you put some situations, it's a cat and dog game. Mm -hmm. The top guy is uh, your controller, whoever, and the bottom guy is the sales guy. The guy will say. Hey, do you will you underwrite my bonus for the next year? Mm. Okay, fine. You want to hold less inventory? I'm fine. <laughs> but if you want me to, I I have committed 30% growth this year. Do you think I'm kidding? And you're going to reduce inventory? If you're going to, so it is a heated discussion on D and D prime. Whereas you have to force as an as a consultant, you have to force them to get on to, okay, why do you assume front? And then uh, when it comes to such things, as he uh, put it earlier, there could be a lot of policy things. Okay, I don't hold your bonus against. Yeah. We will still increase sales. Yeah. yeah. This is making them believe that doing one thing and achieving the other branch is possible. Uh, I think what... There's enough of heat to them, for yeah. sure. Also, I think uh, in a lot of situations, if you're talking about uh, implementing some kind of TOC solution, what you'll see is it ends up being a conflict between cost and throughput. That, that seems to be a fairly consistent theme of uh, people wanting to save money for their organization and therefore they take some action versus uh, generating more throughput, right? right. Um, you know, from Ellie's perspective, it's always better to sell more than to make your costs go down. That's how you get the